Good rainy morning, Alan, and good morning to everyone else. Welcome to Tardis Spider. Today we're going to look at the Daemons, one of the most popular stories from the John Pertwee era. So if you like this video, please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and now let's take a look at the Daemons. It's May 1971. On television, one of the landmarks of the Pertwee era, the Daemons. The Daemons, by any measure, is a major story in classic Doctor Who. It is well remembered by both the audience and all who worked on it. Pertry rates this as his favorite story from his time on the show. It also marks the introduction of one of the major writers of the Pertry era, Barry Letts. Already the producer and an occasional director, here he and Robert Sloman collaborate under the pseudonym Guy Leopold. The BBC frowned on producers writing for their own shows, so the pseudonym was used. Sloman's son was Guy, and Lett's middle name is Leopold. This is significant. It's the first time that we are getting a look at what the producer wants the show to be. The Daemons is one of those stories whose premise promises what the ending will be. If you have the master trying to summon the devil in the first act, then you will have a three-way showdown with the Master, the Doctor, and the Devil himself. In this season, we have a staggeringly large six-person regular cast. A lot of characters means a lot of different things to look at, but the real challenge is finding things for all of them to do. The Doctor is used solving problems, which is proper. The Master is used for towering over people and manipulating them. The four remaining regulars are Kathy Manning, Nicholas Courtney, Richard Franklin, and John Levine. The truth is, two are very good actors. Another is a fantastic utility player, and the last, well... This story sidelines the stronger two. Leaning on the others, Manning and Courtney, are fabulous because they play their characters with an illogical consistency, always unflappable and at ease. Just think how much fun this script would be if the Brigadier had had a long scene with Miss Hawthorne. Instead, he spends most of the story staring at an invisible wall while waiting to deliver his most famous line. Chap there with the wings, five rounds rapid. Pure genius. Manning spends another story as a maiden in peril, as the writers seem not sure what to do with her. This will improve in the upcoming seasons. It is Richard Franklin and John Levine who are put in the village to interact with the villagers. Levine understands Benson's role, a simple man of action infused with working-class charm. The scenes with Miss Hawthorne are great. Benson is here to provide a sort of everyday charm, and Levine is excellent at it. As for Richard Franklin... He's just not very good. So having him as a major contributor to the local color is a mistake. You will notice the only bit of local color I mentioned is Miss Hawthorne. Truthfully, Miss Hawthorne is the only actual character in the village. The rest are just stooges to be dominated by the master. Bringing us back to the point of this story, the upcoming three-way confrontation. The Doctor the Master, and the Devil. The Doctor, the Master, and the Devil is an interesting idea. Whatever the flaws of this story, this confrontation is fantastic, and alone it is sufficient to explain the story's popularity. The Daemons features the Doctor actually arguing with Satan, enough to make it a landmark in storytelling. Yes, there is a scientific explanation for the Devil. He's an alien, but... Miss Hawthorne wins her debate, pointing out that the Master's actions are consistent with her claim that magic works. This story revels in the observation that sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yet 40 years later, the Tenth Doctor will explain that the Carrionite science is based upon sounds or words rather than math or numbers as in our world. 
Whichever explanation, Azal the daemon is both an advanced alien and he is the devil. So the doctor is to correct to believe in science and Miss Hawthorne is correct to believe in what appears as magic. This is the ultimate trick of the story. So take time to enjoy this classic. It's pure magic. And now a few tidbits. When trying to get the brigadier through the invisible barrier, the doctor's plan adopts a technique for canceling out sound distortion, as described in Wireless World, June 1953. Sort of a controlled resonance. This story was also one of the first stories to be ever shown in rerun. It had a 10.5 million viewing figures for that. The wizard Qui Quai Quad are the three genders for the Latin word who. There is also no TARDIS in this story. And John Pertwee took the box statue home and put it in his garden instead of a gnome. He will also use the line that he's most famous for, reverse the polarity. So do enjoy the Daemons. It's a fan favorite. It's a favorite of mine. And if you haven't seen it, it may become a favorite of yours. So remember, enjoy your journey through time and space, and never ever forget, a child cannot have a favorite book if they do not have one. Give a child a book today. Good night.